There was no warning whatsoever. I'd never heard them once say that any of the journalists, the media, or the protesters had to disperse. When I said, don't handcuff me, then four officers were involved in my arrest. I felt like my rights as a citizen were violated when I was ordered to go through a strip search for no reason. You might think that Canadian Journalists for Free Expression only helps people in other parts of the world, places like Iran or Burma. Canadians often take for granted that our human rights are guaranteed in the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. But CJFE also plays a big role in protecting free speech right here in Canada. That task was especially large this last summer. Downtown Toronto. The G8 G20 summits, heated protests, but also wide scale human rights abuses. An immense security force brought out an arsenal of tactics and weapons rarely seen in Canada. It was the largest mass arrest in Canadian history outside of wartime. CJFE's office became the epicenter for complaints from journalists, frustrated and even frightened. Dozens of reporters contacted CJFE to say that police were trying to shut down their coverage. In the days and weeks that followed, CJFE documented those testimonies in fine detail and revealed large-scale contraventions of the Charter. Uh, the, the crowd is... is uh, hey, wait a second. That's Farzad. Journalist Farzad Fatolazadeh works as a field producer with CTV. About a dozen cops approached me and told me to drop my phone, drop everything that was in my hands. They asked me what I was doing there. I told them I was media, I showed them my pass. And they just kept telling me that I should have known better and that I wasn't allowed to be where I was, which was a few feet from where our truck and the rest of the crew was. So I kept trying to reason with her and she wasn't buying it, so she ordered my arrest. Is he in so, handcuffs? Um, what's, what's, what's he got around his wrist? Yes, yeah, yeah, he is. By the time I got to the detention center, I knew I was going to be there for a while. Freelance journalist Lisa Walter was on assignment for Our Times magazine. Get out of here! I showed my press credentials and an officer said, oh, well, they're fake. It was the official G20 pass uh, that accredited me with their alternative media center. I was pushed to the ground by three officers. Put your hand behind your back. And they were screaming at me, put your hands behind your back. One of my arms was under my body and I couldn't get it behind my back because there were so many police officers pressing down on top of me. And then I started to get kinds of uh, sexist uh, taunts uh, about my physical appearance. There was this kind of unremitting banter directed at me that was quite harsh and very offensive and uh, really humiliating. The reporters joined hundreds of protesters and casual observers who'd also been cuffed and taken to the Eastern Detention Center. Vincenzo Dalto managed to film when police nabbed his colleague, National Post photographer Colin O'Connor. At one point, about four officers ran out and threw me to the ground and arrested me. I told them I was with the media, I was a National Post photographer, they told me that they didn't care and I was arrested and roughed up pretty good and hit over the head kneed in the back and elbowed and then dragged behind the police line. I've covered tense situations before in Haiti and I've worked in Uganda. I photographed quietly and very unobtrusively and I never once got in the way of the police doing their job. So I was quite surprised to be, to be arrested. On Sunday evening, Globe and Mail columnist Lisanne Jutra was reporting on a rally near Queen and Spadina. I can tell you for sure that we were never, never told, leave or this is going to happen. And then it began to rain and uh, 
That was what really made it memorable, I think. Lisan, along with about 200 protesters, bystanders, and people who were simply out for a walk, was held for over four hours in a police maneuver known as kettling. This tactic involves using lines of police officers to block off the exits and contain a crowd within a limited area. And so I was just physically made powerless and that was an extremely uncomfortable, overwhelming experience and it was just shocking. Someone holding my hands behind my back, someone trying to take off my bike helmet, someone trying to remove my purse, this was all going on at the same time. And I'm trying to say, I'm with the globe, I'm with the globe. and I. It was, it was a bit surreal. And then there were the physical injuries. That's what a nightstick looks like. In a first for Toronto, police fired rubber bullets at the crowds. Journalist Vincenzo Dalto works as a freelance photographer. At one point, he was in an area that had been designated as the free speech area. I had been shooting a little bit of video of the line of uh, riot police that were advancing on the crowd and then at one moment they just rushed the crowd. So along with the protesters I ran back, the police line stopped and at that point I heard a gunfire and an instant later I felt a sting on my leg and I realized I'd been hit by a rubber bullet. My leg was bruised and my whole thigh was covered in a purple-black bruise uh, for a good part of two weeks. Lawyer and CJFE board member John Norris was extremely busy the weekend of the G20, advising several media organizations and representing journalists, including Colin O'Connor. I'm very proud of the work that CJFE is doing to monitor free expression within Canada. And the, um, the very prompt reaction that came from the events on the G20. CJFE's intervention proves, as always, that the struggle for free speech begins at home.